Troy Galloway is a construction manager and consultant, commercial and residential builder, and a certified inspector for all commercial and residential buildings. And now, here is About the House with Troy Galloway. Hello, folks. Welcome back to About the House. This is your audio university on everything about your home that you could ever possibly need to know. What is so great about this show is absolutely it's very unique. They're one of a kind. And because you can get us on YouTube or on podcast, you can go back and review it, take notes, because we do have so much information that a lot of folks tell me I have to listen to it two or three times to ever get it all out of it. So that's why we call it a university library, because of you can go back and review it. And so, hey, and like I said, you can get us out there on podcast. Our podcast is called About the House. This is what this radio show is. But you can also pick us up under Galloway Building Services. And if you see us on YouTube and you pick us up that way, hey, do us, you know, you want to be on the mailing list or you subscribe, hit subscribe, hit follow, hit the alert, that little alarm bell there, though, as we can be alerted to all the new shows, uh, also to all the new videos, also besides the shows, uh, so that you can be up to date. And, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. And I know a lot of people just love it. As a matter of fact, we had so many people that when we had a little law there uh, because of the COVID thing happening, people were saying, hey, when you kind of do another show, we really like it. Well, so just hit that alarm button, follow, and you will be up to speed. This is Troy Galloway. I'm the owner of Galloway Building Services. I am your humble host. And this is our show about the house. Just like this radio show, Galloway Building Services is a one-of-a-kind company. We do, like a lot of the folks, we do home and building inspections. So if you're buying or selling a home, you want to make sure you know what you're getting or, you know, if it's going to be a money pit or not, you give us a call. We'll take a look at it. Love it when you walk through with us and we can talk about it. But what makes us even more unique than any of the other uh uh, home inspecting companies is that we also do construction inspections. So if you're like building a home, especially when you're building a home or doing a remodel or a kitchen or a basement finish, and you just want to make sure this job is being done right, we get called all the time to help folks do this kind of inspections. Because I too, I've been in construction business now for 44 years, been a builder now for over 40 years, a building engineering, master carpenter. You're just, you're going to get somebody coming in there, mostly myself for them, because I love them jobs. Uh, and you're going to know somebody that actually knows the nuts and bolts of what's happening inside of your home. Uh, when, as they're building it, nay, hey, there ain't going to be any BS and going on where, this, where the contractor says, oh, that's done right, that done right. And then when he's gone and you done paid him, well, then you're having troubles. Nope, don't wait till that happens. Another thing that we do that's helped separates us from, you know, the other home inspection companies is that we also do litigation work, expert witnessing work. And so if that job that you didn't get inspected as it goes through and if you have troubles with it in the future or you're just saying, hey, I'm not going to pay this guy because I know this is not done right. You give us a call. We come in. We have attorneys that work with us, great attorneys that will be able to help you, guide you through the legal system. Uh, you know, nobody really wants this to happen, but we, you know, this is something that we do all the time for folks. Uh, we also help you if you... You know, and I, I this is a sad time thing when this happens, but it does happen when folks get divorced and you want to make sure that one of you get the house, and you, but you don't want to pay any more than what it's really worth. And you know you got some problems. And, you know, a, a general appraiser, what that basically is, is just a general average of homes. Say if it's a three-bedroom home, they go through a three-bedroom home uh, as the average in the neighborhoods that you're buying your home in. But what if that home that you're, you know, you're going to have to pay for you know, or buy your partner out and you know you got these other issues it's, and it's really not worth the average? That's what we come in and help you with. So we can help save you a ton, a ton of money. What we say is that our motto is we make sure you're getting the jobs done right, you're getting what you paid for, and you're not getting ripped off. 
And that's really important. So give us a call, Galloway Building Services. My our office phone number is 636 394 3112. So, folks, today we're going to be doing a radio show. Our show show is going to be on insulation. We're going into the cold season. We've already done a show on what to get ready for in the fall. You know, we got all our fall tips in. Hey, check them out. Uh, the great shows. We've got windows on doors, all these past shows. But now I think it's really important that we actually understand the insulation of the home. And insulation helps saves us a ton of money. Now, I'm sure you all love your power company and you don't mind giving them all the money you need. And you don't mind doing without a little bit of extra food or you don't mind doing without your medicine because you got to pay for the utility bill. Heck, I remember... Well, we're not going to go there. I was going to say I worked on a utility company under board of directors. Folks, these folk, these people are not your friends. Who is your friend? You and your own wallet. And that's what we're talking about, insulation. So you fully understand how to save money and how to get the biggest bang out of your buck. Now, insulation. You can actually, so I'm going to to preface it from the very beginning here, because when I was getting my building engineering degree, we talked a lot about insulation, and you do hit a point of diminishing return. And what does that mean is that you can put too much money in your insulation, and you're never going to be able to get enough back out of savings. So it's smart to know what is the best type of insulation for your application. And I'm hoping that's what this show is going to help you with today. Now, first, let's talk about how insulation works. We're going to start with the nuts and bolts of it and kind of work our way in. And then we're going to get into the different types of insulation that are out there and kind of a little bit about how they work. And and so you kind of got a really good working idea of what it is. But to understand how insulation work helps to understand how it works with the three basic mechanisms of heat flow. That's really what we're talking about, cutting back the heat flow. So we got three different types of heat flow. And I know you guys probably remember this in school, you know, but some of it's been a long time since we've been in this classroom. So the first one is conduction. And that's the way heat moves through materials, such as when you put a spoon in a cup of coffee and you let that sit and then that heat just comes up to the top of the spoon. Well, that is conduction. And then convection. We've got a lot of convection ovens out there. We really don't, a lot of folks don't understand other than they heat real fast. They're really great. Uh, we love them. But what is convection? Well, it's the way heat circulates through the liquids and gases. And, you know, basically why it's uh, why lighter, warmer air rises and cooler, denser air sinks in your home. And then we have radiant heat, which actually travels in a straight line. You remember this from school, it runs from a straight line and heats anything solid in its path that absorbs the energy, such as sunlight coming through your window. Uh, you know, if you have, you know, that's radiant heat. I'm doing this show out of St. Louis City here today, and, uh, you know, we have a lot of old radiator heaters. Oh, you know, them things, they're hard to manage, but they really do warm the old body up good. And, of course, wood stoves, a lot of our folks still heat with wood and coal and uh uh you know it, it, it just just like it just like the other type of heat it just warms you from the inside out it literally does warm you from the inside out so you know uh remember the three different types of heat flow and that's what we're trying to work with how we're going to slow that energy moving from one point to the other how to conserve it so no matter how the no matter what system it is or what mechanism heat flows from warmer to cooler until there is no longer a temperature difference so if you're uh, you know it's winter time you know you're going to be actually you're going to be losing your heat through up into well unheated areas like attics you know it you know it just sucks that heat right up and it makes that energy flow right in until you yeah, also into our, our garages, our basement areas. So, you know, which we've talked about in other shows, you know, get fall tips, winter tips, etc. Uh, but how to stop that. But this is why it does that until it actually equals out. Now, it does the same thing in the winter, summertime, 
when the heat's outside of your home and you're trying to cool it, you know, that's trying to just suck, that heat's just trying to suck right into your home. Uh, so, you know, insulation works. Hey, that's what's so great about it. It helps in both manners, winter and summer. So make sure that you can, we know what we got and how we got it. Oh, there's all kinds of different types of insulation out there. That's why it kind of gets very confusing because of and, and a lot of the synonyms and acronyms that goes along with it. But think about this. So, you know, we're going to start off with some of them. We're just going to go through a quick list of them. But, you know, we got our blanket insulation, bats and rolls. That's usually fiberglass. We'll talk a little bit more about that. That's our most common that most of us see out there or that we're familiar with. Really, maybe not the most common, but we're most familiar with. And then, of course, you got your uh, concrete block insulation. You got foam board in it, rigid insulation. Uh, you got uh, also you got concrete forms that have insulation. Actually, you don't see a lot of that in, in the Midwest, but we're seeing more and more of it, you know, especially uh, foundations and such. And, and, and what that really is is just foam boards and insulation blocks around your foundation. And then you got your blow-in insulation, and we use the blow-in. We're going to talk a little bit about that as we go along here, but that's usually in near attic areas and such. And then you got your reflective systems that reflects the heat back into out of your you know out or into your home however you're trying to make it happen and then you got fiber insulation you got spray and oh one of my favorites is your spray foam insulation and there's different types of that all out there uh, and then your structural insulated panels, SIPS is what they call them, S-I-P-S, SIPS. So, you know, them are also a different type. And crazy enough is that's foam, you know, they actually, some of that's got straw core insulation. I, I actually didn't even know that until I started doing some research for this show. Uh, but, and I don't know that I've ever saw any. And now I actually was, I was doing research, they even got uh, marijuana is now being used for an insulation board. I'm not quite for sure just how well that works uh, because it's, you know, as you can guess, that is fairly new. Now, don't think that you're going to go grab some of this marijuana insulation and smoke it because that's a different type of a marijuana product. So <laughs> just, <laughs> just keep the pipe back in the car. It's not going to be needing it for this. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, our R values. What... R values. That's we see a lot of that. What is R value? What's that really mean? Well, it's really simple. R value is just the resistance to energy flow. I say heat flow, but we're going to say energy flow because actually it's cold or hot. All energy flow. It's a resistance, and the higher the R number is, the more insulation that it has. Now, kind of what we see is that. We'll see walls or we'll see an R value. Okay, we're just going to pick on walls here for a second. Because I started with that same thing with ceilings or anything. So if you got an R value, say of R13 for your wall or R19, whatever, you know, it depends on what part of the country you're in. Uh, so you got that R value. Well, a lot of people are going to think, well, I have, this is what my R value is in my of my walls. So that's my R value in my home. That's really not true. And why isn't it true is because you have all of them sticks of lumber in your home, whether it's a, if it's a stick built house or if it's a metal home, you know, metal stud home or, or, or steel home, you know. So you think about that. So you got the insulation goes in between the cavities of the of their walls, uh, between the studs, the support structure. And them, so your R value may be R13 or R19 or et cetera, whatever, but your, your wood, you know, it's got a, a low R value, you know, depending on the thickness and the type of wood. But, you know, R1, R2. And so you got a home that's literally got about 20, depending on the type of build and how it's built, 20, 30 percent all wood. Well, that's going to lower that R value of the home. I want you to remember that as we're talking, as we go through the show here today, because there's ways to get around that and make it so it's more even and better insulated value. Okay, so that's just remember that with all them sticks, all them boards don't have much R value, um, and that does take it away. 
Now you got your uh, also another thing that affects our R value. The resistance is is application. Is it applied correctly? Is it installed? This goes for all types of insulation. Is it installed correctly? You know, what if they didn't get the gaps filled or just right or you know, there's draft or what if it gets wet? You know, that has uh, some of the insulations it really do, which we'll talk about as we go through here. That really bought, hurts them. It really hurts them. What do I mean by that? It does hurt them, uh, but it lowers the R value and, uh, you know, can cause other kind of issues, too. So think about that as you were do as we're going through the show here today. Another thing too is that when we get our blow in insulation, we'll talk about that. And if I say it twice, just forgive me, uh, but because uh, it's been my notes in a couple of different areas because I think it's important. So we get like an R45 and R60. You know, in my home, I got a high energy efficient home. I actually got up to R100 in some of my parts of my roof uh, because, like I say, it's a high energy efficient home, but. Um, Fiberglass fat type insulation, it's basically built, or you know, cellulose or blow in insulation. It's basically what it does is it's not, not all of the materials, but most of the materials, it's the dead air space that's caught between your fiberglass or your material. And that is your insulation value. That's what creates your insulation value. So you don't want to compress that insulation to the point that you're closing them dead air spaces off because that lowers your insulation value. People think, oh, I just keep on putting it in there. Well, the heavier it gets, the worse it gets. That's why home inspectors, you don't want your home inspector walking around in your attic. For one, he can't see what's happening up there. But if he's doing too much walking around or if there's not a place for him to walk, he's compressing your insulation and, and you're losing your insulation value. So he's not helping you. He's hurting you. And a lot of them, well, of course, mo I don't think most home inspectors even have a clue about that. Oh, so we did a construction inspection a few years ago. Now, here's a perfect example. And they was the people were wondering, well, I have an R, what was it, an R20 something insulation value in their home, in the walls. And I said, well, how could that be? I said, what type of insulation do you have? We have fiberglass bats. The contractor said this was great. Well, I, it's fine insulation. There's nothing wrong with the insulation. But they had a three and a half inch stud, standard two by four stud. They crammed this insulation in there, both them layers in there, two R11s, or I believe it was, or two R13s, I don't recall. But anyway, they crammed them in there so tight that it just got rid of all their insulation value. And these folks was literally getting ice, no kidding, ice on the inside of their home because that there wasn't any insulation. It was just, just nothing but a heat transference right back into their home. And so when that cold air come in and hit that warm air, then that's what created the condensation, which in turn created ice. So remember that you want it fluffy as it's required for by the manufacturer's recommendations. That's something to think about, too, whenever uh, you've got a contractor trying to sell you something higher insulation value. Talk about what type of insulation it is, and, and you're going to have some great ideas on what you have here uh, from the show here. So that's going to help you a ton. Oh, anyway, let's move on with that. We've already talked about uh, how it's two by four, our studs and whatnot, what helps us lose our heat loss through there. But the type of insulation you're going to be using or choose depends on two things. It depends on where you're at in the country. Because I got, like I said before, a lot of folks listen to this show all over the United States. But also, it's going to depend on your budget. Some types of insulation is a heck of a lot cheaper. Sometimes I don't really need to have the fancy stuff. Sometimes when I'm in a really cold area or I got some areas of my home that's super, uh, that's really exposed, you know, like my home, I got on my north wall, my northeast wall, really, really cold. So I got a higher insulation value actually on that side than I do the other side. But it depends on how much money you have uh, to spend and, of course, where you're living at. So... Also, we want to talk a little bit about radiant barriers, and that ba radiant barrier is just a reflective system materials that remit uh, radiant heat. Rather than absorbing it, it just reduces it because, you know, like during the summertime, 
you know, we don't want that heat coming in. So we can use a reflective surface. It used to be, and I still think, we're going. hopefully we can get a uh, curtain or blind peep company come on here and talk about insulation blinds and such. They really do have them, insulated curtains, insulated blinds. And they talk about how that actually saves, uh, you know, help you save money. And we talk about that in some of our past shows, too. So think about that, too. Also, this is a big one. Also remember that air, sealing, and moisture control are as important or maybe even more important to the efficiency, health, and comfort of your home. I would always recommend, you know, which I've talked about that in the last several shows, uh, cutting down that airflow. So think about that. All right, so let's just jump right in here and start talking a little bit about the different types of insulation. And like I said, we're not going to get down into the nuts and bolts of each one of them, but just a little bit about, you know, the types of what they are. And, of course, you got the blankets and rolls of insulation. And, uh, you know, the Pink Panther, remember that one out there? You know, that's, you know, it's a type of, uh, that's just really the brand, but that's a, you know, fiberglass type of blanket insulation, not just fiberglass, because actually... Uh, some of our insulation is made out of cotton. It's made out of mineral wool, rock wool insulation. It's pretty good stuff. It's also fireproof stuff, too. We use fireproofing and pl- plastic fibers. And it's more of, you know, it's more of a do-it-yourselfer kind of uh, insulation that you can use yourself. You can put it in or you can add to it. And uh, we usually use it in walls and floors and ceilings. And, uh, and it's really simple to put in and, and apply yourself it, or add to what you might have. Uh, so think about that when, you know, if you're going to do it yourself. But now here's a tip that I want you to remember when you're dealing with fiberglass. Fiberglass insulation basically is ba- nothing more than blown glass. Well, you know, that's why it cuts you. That's why you, when you get all itchy and stuff from dealing with it with bare hands, it literally slices you up with little cuts. But it, that can heal. But it also gets down into your lungs. So you want to make sure you wear some sort of protection. Of course, in today's society, everybody's wearing masks for the COVID. Well, I'd be, wearing, I'd be worried about right now wearing my mask if I'm doing insulation which the guys and the gals have been using forever a mask to make sure that is it's it's you're safe you don't you don't want that glass down inside of your uh, lungs and uh, standard fiberglass insulations there are value is you know uh, r.29 we say an r3 to a uh, to a higher uh, level of insulation of better performances r38 uh, you know, that depends on per thickness. And then you got your high performance, medium density or high density fiberglass insulation blankets and bats. And they're point, you know, they're an R37 to a point R43 per inch thickness. So you can just kind of give you an idea how much insulation when you look up in your attic, just measure it. If it's a fiberglass, you could tell if it's fiberglass, you know, if it's pink or yellow or one of the, you know, that's usually our two basic colors. And also, if you reach in there and, and rub your hands on, if get, and if it gets all itchy, <laughs> then that's a good point, too. But that'll tell you about how much insulation you have already existing. Uh, and then your home inspectors are supposed to know that uh, by day. They'll measure it and kind of get an idea of what they have. All righty. So then you got your blow-in insulation. And blow-in insulation, you know, that's also, they, we, it's made out of all types of different types of material. Now, it literally is a machine that blows it into your home. And uh, so it does like, um, oh, yeah, you can rent them machines at Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or your lumber yard. So it is a do-it-yourself or kind of a project. You just got to have somebody down below to the load the hopper. Well, you got somebody up there blowing it in. And then when you get it blown in, then, you know, we get these long rakes or, you know, and kind of level it out. You try to get it blown in there as even as possible, but it's not always going to happen. So you just kind of level it out so you kind of equal around. Really good stuff. We also make it, make it out of cellulose reclaimed materials like newspapers and cardboards. And um, uh, there's some great materials out there for that if you're really into, you know, recycling. And it's good stuff. And it is fire retardant. I know. People say, well, I don't want that up in there because that'll catch fire. Well, 
Actually, they do have a lot of trouble when they're manufacturing it because they do have these dust fires. But don't worry. By the time it gets into your home, it's already been well treated, and it's not going to have any kind of troubles with that. And you're the same there. You're about to R, you know, it's about the same as what your R values per inch of your fiberglass bats or your bat insulation. And uh, it's real simple. It's, it's do-it-yourself or friendly. And I, I think, uh, you know, a lot of folks like to do it. But if it's you're not a handy person, it's really economical to get an insulation company to come in there to do this for you. All right, I'm going to jump over here now to one of my favorites is in the spray foam insulation. And spray foam insulation, I like it because, well, it is a little more expensive, but I think, I really feel as if we get a good bang for our buck with this. Because it's, there's so many more things that it does. Uh, you know, our bad insulation, it's not going to cut down on airflow. You can easily get it crammed in there too tight uh, and cut down on how much, you know, and it's, it's where foam is going to give you the air sealant, depending on the type of product. It can give you a, a moisture barrier, you know, from back and forth. So these are some really great ways. And also, we also can get spray foam insulation to you know, in a can to put in around our little nooks and crannies. And, and you know, we talk about that in some of our other radio shows here that when we're talking, such as our getting ready for the fall or our winter class, our summer energy conservation classes or, and shows that we've done. And uh, we got non-expandable and you got expandable. When you're spraying around your windows and doors, don't use the expandable which we talked about before because it could it, it really does do the job i mean it seals it up nice and tight just use the non-expandable so you don't create others but if you have other areas that you really can't get into very well to insulate get the expandable and it'll just poof it'll just go and it'll find any kind of a void and fill it up really really good stuff for that now what we have is two different types of a foam insulation. We got what we call an open cell foam insulation, and we also have a closed cell foam insulation. And they both have their applications that really work great. Now, I love to see in, uh, at all possible when we're doing an attic insulation, I like to see us use the closed cell insulation uh, reason is is because it's denser, a higher R value, and you know what, and it'll find all the nooks and crannies, and it'll find them voids, and and uh, really does a fabulous job. Uh, but open cell also has its advantages too. For one, it's a little cheaper. You have to put a little bit more into it. And it's kind of like, you know, kind of more spongy. You'll be able to tell a closed cell versus an open cell. When you take your knife and you cut a little bit of it, the closed cell is really a dense material. And uh, that's how come you doesn't take as many, as many inches to create the same type of R value. But the closed cell, if it gets wet, it doesn't have the ability to get wet. It'll hold that moisture. And where open cell will breathe. And so it can dry. If you're using that type of insulation, think about it if you're going to be using it in your rafter space. What may be working best for you? Now, if you ever have a leak and you do get this, uh, you can spray open cell on top of closed cell insulation. You cannot use closed cell insulation upon open cell. At least that's what the manufacturers claim, say. So think about that, you know, what best works for you. Now, we all are hearing different lawsuits and things about some of the type of applications. I want to give you the ugly two here of, of our foam insulation. And some of it gets, they call it gassing out. And some of this is it, it's chase people out of their homes. It's just literally are unsafe for them to be in. Now, it's like all insulation. No matter what type, if you're allergic to certain things, find out what's inside the insulation that you're going to be using. Make sure that you know you're not going to be allergic to that particular product. Also, make sure that your contractor. Now, this sale, this unless it's in a can and you're just going around nooks and crannies. If you're insulating your home with this type of insulation, 
you really need to have a professional do it and not somebody that just does it once in a while. You want to make sure that they are certified with the uh, with the Insulation Institute and just pull it up and also talk to past customers. We talk about that with hiring contractors, but I'll just say it real quick again. Don't just ask them for a list of referrals. Ask them for, give me the last 10 people you did a job for, the last five people you did a job for. I like 10, but, you know, five at the minimum. Not the last, not five names, but the last five or 10 that you've done the work for. Uh, how long they're going to give you the best information if they've had any issues. Also, how long is your technicians that's going to be doing the work on my home? How long have they actually been doing it? Because the company may be certified, but that technician that comes out there, it might be his first, second job. Well, this is where our problems come into play. And not that I think that's our biggest problem with that type of insulation. But our blow-in insulation, you know, it can be anywhere from our, our close cell. This is what I love about it. It's like around 6.2 uh, R value per inch thickness. Wow. You know, you can see where you're putting stuff like that up on your ceiling or something. You can really put a lot of insulation up there in a, in a little space. And uh, our open cell is, our, you know, is approximately R37 per inch of thickness. So think about that when you're putting your insulation. It's a great idea. Not a lot of guys or, or folks or companies are qualified to do it, but there's a lot of good companies. Just do a little research on them. So, and uh, we're not going to get into a whole lot of the different types of, uh, there's like several different types of different type foam insulation, but you just do a little research. This is just an hour show, so I don't want to drag it out. And kind of also only a construction nerd like myself would actually find it interesting. What do we mostly care as homeowners? Hey, I want it done right. I want to make sure I'm not getting ripped off and I'm getting what I paid for. That's the main thing. So, Think about that. And uh, like I say, foam insulation, it costs a little more than the others, but uh, we'll just think about that when we're doing it. All righty. Now, we also have rigid foam board and rigid foam panels. And uh, I like them. You know, say, if, say if you're insulating a floor, aren't I, there are some unvented low slope roofs out there. I really think you need to keep your roofs well ventilated. But in some applications, you know, under framing and things like that, you know, you're going to want to have that. So these are rigid board insulation. Uh, flat roofs, for instance, you know, they're not a vented. Most of they're vented, but a lot of them are attic vented. And uh, so these are great areas to put that in. And uh, I love them right there. You know, these foam boards work really great. And their R values are anywhere from R4 to R4.65 per thickness. And, uh, you know, they, they're... Okay, so some of these, like, we put these on our foundation walls, on our foundation walls, floors and ceilings. So we do some of these foam boards, a type of insulation. Well, it's like a structural insulated panels. SIPs, you know, these different type of applications. So remember when we was talking earlier about the studs and how we look, and they don't really give us that great insulation value because of the low R value. And then all we got all these, got all, you know, when I use infrared, I pick up the studs. I can literally tell you where your studs are at because they're just shining. They just show right up there because of the difference of energy loss going through them. But if you put these boards on the outside of your home, uh, insulation boards, and wrap it up with that, it's going to be a thermal barrier between the two. You can also get them so as that they're going to be a moisture barrier. Man, they are. They're, they're, sometimes, a lot of our prefab homes come with it automatically already on it. Some of these panels, they can come, you know, 8 to 10 feet by 30 some feet. I, I don't know exactly how far the limitations go. Big, huge panels that you got to have a crane to put them up with. Um, of course, you know, the less pieces that you have, the more continuous the insulation value is going to be for you. So think about that. And it's like SIPs, the structural engineer panels, you know, they're, they're normally about four to eight inches thick of foam board. 
Um, you know, uh, some of them comes in closed sale, some of open sale. We've already talked all about that. And, uh, they, you know, that's going to help you a lot right there. I really am a big believer, especially if you got slab on grade home. Uh, we still get a lot of that, especially when we start going into our southern states that don't have basements. And uh, so you want that. And what happens is in them areas that, that cold comes right into the ground. They might not have the cold like up north, but they come right into the ground and that just absorbs. And remember how we talked about how that heat flows, you know, and uh, cold flows uh, back and forth. You know, and that's why you want to insulate them now. A lot of your architects are going to call for it. Codes do call for it. But if you're in an area that that's not the case, or you're just trying to make a higher energy efficient house, that's perfect to try to use. So these are different types of insulations that we can use. We also, uh, uh, I guess, I, I, I was like some of my things that I was reading here, we have a boric acid treated insulation panels. Why do you want a boric acid ins- treated insulation? Ah. Huh. That's a, actually, it's a great idea. Oh, there's another tip here. I'm going to give you two tips. But the boric acid. So why do we use that? Is it because it deters bugs and, and, and cockroaches and these kind of and critters that come through? They don't like that. So, But here's a tip, too, before you actually... Now, this is k- kind of a twofold animal here. When you're doing your home... And you want to make sure that as more cockroach and bu- as much as possible bug, you know, uh, anti-friendly as that you can be, get you some boric acid. It's really cheap. And put you a little and put that all around inside of your walls, at the base of your walls. And, of course, that's about the easiest place to put it. And that will keep your cockroaches and such from coming through. Uh, it's real cheap. It's real quick. You can do it yourself. Don't worry about your contractor. Boric acid will not hurt you, will not bother you. But when you actually have your boards treated with that, that means you don't only have it on the base. You got the whole continuous wall with that. So these are some real, that's a really good thing to think about. Also, a lot of these insulation boards are fireproof. Your foam insulation, it's that it's fireproof. And I mean, it's tremendous, uh, this foam insulation. So that'll help, you know, and, and actually in areas that are prone to ca- houses catching on fire, such as our western coast states that have a lot of these kind of problems, these are the homes that are actually hanging in there tight, you know, because they're not, they're not having a chance to catch a fire as easily. Everything can burn as easily as a, just a regular conventional stick built home. And then we got concrete block insulation. And uh, we see, you know, we don't see a lot of that in my area, but we do see that out there. And uh, they definitely is a different type kind of you know, insulation uh, that goes on there. And, and on hollow core units, some of it made with concrete and wood chips are also, they, they use that inside of them. Um, they're a little bit more expensive, and in the Midwest, it's really – remember we called it, talked about the point of diminishing return or cost of diminishing return. Sometimes I just wonder <laughs> when I do the cost analysis, is it really – am I really going to ever gain that much value by spending that extra? But if you feel good with it, by George, do it. You know, that's a great way and help you save some money at the same time. And then we talk a little bit of our radiant barrier. Now – you know, there's a lot of the areas that we do, and this was a real big thing in the 80s and 90s in the Midwest. I still highly, th- I still highly recommend it in everywhere, and uh, and that is put it up in your attic. And we just, it's nothing but a radiant blanket, radi- and it just uh, reflects the heat right back up or out. So if it's in the south. You want your heat not coming down. You just flip it so it reflects it back. Or if it's in this, you're, you're in this, uh, the other part of the country where you're trying to stay cooler or heat your home, and uh, you know you just pre- reflect it right back into your home. That one is a good bang for your buck. You'll be happy that you have that one. Let me wrap this show up. Hazardous waste. We do have some materials that's no longer being made. Vermiculite. Some of that old type of insulation used in the 40s and 50s, it was a blow-in insulation. It was really a good insulation, but it does have uh, hazardous waste in it. It is considered uh, dangerous. Don't fool with it. 
if you're going to have to remediate, you get a professional company, don't touch it. Do your research. How does it, what's it look like? What's it look like? Okay. You could be able to tell it real quick. When you look up in your, first one, check our YouTube videos out there. Of course, you're going to hit follow and you're going to, and, and you're also going to hit like uh, and, 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 and the alert button so you can get the new ones. But how will you know if you got it? When, when you look at it, is some of it kind of looks like it's got shiny stuff inside of it. It's little like particles, um, like pieces of it, you know, uh, I don't know, little eighth by eighth inch kind of little material. And it's got little shiny pieces. And if you are in doubt, just t- be gentle, get you a little bit, put in a cup, seal the cup, take it to a research lab. We have some all every every city has these places and they'll test it for you because not, not all of that is bad and got the hazardous material in it. But who takes the chance? And if you want to know more about how to take care of that, call me, contact me. But how do you do that? Well, give us a call. Our office number, it is 636-394-3112. But my cell phone, which I was getting ready to give that first, 314 520 six six five five but you can also find us out there on uh, my web page www galloway building services i got a place that you can ask questions facebook twitter we're on most all the social media and give us a call you know and check us out talk to us and we'll help you any way we can we don't charge anything for helping answering questions and it just might save you a ton of money. You're going to get the best bang for your buck. I hope this has been great. I hope this is something that you guys learn from. And I hope that uh, you can take advantage of it and don't let somebody rip you off. you get what you really need for your application. Well, thank you, folks, for listening to our show. I appreciate your time. And uh, we'll stay in touch. Troy Galloway, Galloway Building Services. And this show is called About the House. Check us out. Thank you, folks. Have a great day. Sponsored by Troy Galloway and Galloway Building Services, your top choice for professional home inspections in the St. Louis area. GallowayBuildingServices.com. Bye-bye.